Welcome back, Conference USA Media Day, our final team of today. And of course, tomorrow we'll be taking a look at the teams from the East, including defending champion FAU. Once again, that'll get started at 9 a.m. Eastern time right here for the Baylor Scott and White Performance Center in Frisco, Texas. Joining us now, Louisiana Tech finished the season seven and six on the season. And their head coach, Skip Hall. Skip, good to see you again, you know, buddy. Right, doing, nice to see you as well. First, Everything going okay for you? Well, you didn't bring me any Bulldog Crunch, but I'll, I'll forgive you this You have this to come time. to Ruston to get that. Oh, okay, you have to come okay. to Ruston, you get Bulldog Crunch. There we go. Teddy Veal, wide receiver, Conference USA Newcomer of the Year. And Jalen Ferguson, two-time first team, All-Conference USA. Gentlemen, good to have you here. Glad to be Give here. Give me kind of a synopsis of last season in your eyes, what it was like outside of the fact that they never could get the same offensive line together. No, I mean it was a it was a year with some frustrations, obviously with some of the injuries and uh, losing a couple of receivers, offensive linemen, defensive backs. As we went through the year, there were some frustrations with it, but it was a year of close calls. I mean, it was a year there were four games that were decided by a point mm -hmm. or overtime. Uh, that if you find a way to win those close games, you're sitting here in an 11 win season. And so, I mean, it was a game of frustrations, but one I think that is going to help propel us because even with the frustrations we had, we finished strong. Won the last two games of the year, went to the bowl game, beat SMU in the bowl game 51-10, which I think those winning three games in a row really kind of helps propel the thing going forward. There's been four programs in the country that have won four bowl games, and that's Georgia, Wisconsin, there Utah, and Louisiana Tech. So certainly I'm not embarrassed from what we've accomplished, but there's still some things that we've left on the table that we want to achieve. Because you have set those expectations high. You know, and, and that's something you and I have talked about in the past, but what stands out is you had eight different offensive line rotations I think that has to be most in college football last year. Well, it was a lot of them. I know it was week 10 to 11 before we oh. started the same five the same five guys two weeks in a row. And so those were frustrations. You can't use them as excuses. I mean, what I think that has given us an opportunity to do, we were one of the younger teams in the country. We gained a lot of experience mm -hmm. last year. A lot of depth was created. A lot of guys got to play with some of the injuries. And if we can take some of those frustrations from a year ago and we can help turn those into successes for the 2018 season, then it was worth going through it. Let's keep with the offense because Jay Mar Smith last year passed for almost 3,000 yards, 16 touchdowns. He's a dual threat guy because he also rushed for 532 yards. What's the expectation for him this year, and where does he need to improve? Well, he just needs to continue to grow, continue to develop, especially from a mental standpoint. He was a he was a sophomore a year ago. I think it was a, a, a great humbling experience to go to with Mississippi State and mm -hmm. turn the ball over the way that he did, but I thought he bounced back incredibly strong. I think he, he grew mentally as a quarterback. He has great understanding going from his sophomore to his junior year. He has great understanding of of the offense, of reading defenses, of where to go with the ball. And I think some of the lessons that he learned, I mean, he just he learned uh, how to pick the ball up and throw to first and make the routine play and be able to move the offense. And very talented player, but I'm really excited about the growth that he's making mentally as a quarterback. Well, he's going to have a thumper behind him because Cam McKnight was a 230-pound tight end. Now you're putting him in the backfield. What's that going to be like? Well, uh, it certainly brings a little bit more size than we've had back there in the past. And there's some other guys. There's some young guys maybe that haven't played a lot. Jaquise Dancy is a name as a running back uh, that's certainly going to go a long way uh, back there. And then I think we're going to have one of the best offensive lines we've had since I've been there with four returning starters mm -hmm. coming back. I think that's one of the things when you talked about the, the lack of stability on that offensive line, that goes a long way in the confidence of a quarterback. And having four of those guys back and to see the way the offensive line is really maturing and growing, I think it's going to help him as well. And he's got some pretty good guys to throw to it, there like this go. guy on my left and Teddy Veal. Well, Teddy, I'm going to talk to you in a second, but I think you should also have a healthy wide receiver core this season. That's something I don't think you had last year. No, when you look at Rashid Bonnet was a young mm -hmm. guy that came in who ended up missing about six games with a shoulder. Uh, Javante Woodard missed about eight games with a shoulder. Alfred Smith tore his right. ACL in the opening game of the year and missed the entire season. Adrian Hardy was a guy that was about to start, tore hamstring missed six weeks same thing just that lack of stability but we did have we did have our iron man we had our we <laughs> had had our workhorse in teddy veal who is a thousand yard receiver for us and did a great job last year and having him back along with some of those guys that got an opportunity to get their feet wet a year ago like i said i think those will all go a long way in helping us build the 2018 season all right teddy i want to talk to you because talking to coaches last year obviously conference usa newcomer of the year you led the team in receptions but everybody when you talk to me go what about Louisiana Tech's offense? Every coach say we got to stop Teddy Veal. You were the focus of every secondary. What was, when did it hit you that every team wanted to stop you? 
I mean, coaches, you know, put me in the best situation day in and day out, you know, being able to make um, plays with my ability, you know. So as far as, like, the game plan in each and every week, that's what we kind of concentrate on and try to put me in the best position. What's it like, though, now because everybody knows who you are? You're not going to sneak up on anybody this year. Right. What have you worked on? Uh, I just worked on the little things. You know, the little things matter, uh, you know, just concentrating on watching more film, uh, preparing more mentally than anything. But I think uh, while everybody focusing on me, I think our other receivers have taken an extra step to be better than they were yet last year. And uh, all those guys are pretty healthy this year, so – I don't think they want to concentrate on me as much as they did last year. I'm going to have the coach comment on that in a second. But, okay, I'm going to dub you Batman. Who's your Robin in the, as far as the other wide receiver? <laughs> I mean, just all of them. You know, everybody. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, just just everybody brings something different to the table. You talk about Rasheed Barnett. You know, he's a fast right. guy. You talk about Agent Hardy. You know, he got size. George Scott coming along. You know, um. All those guys, Alfred Smith, you know, um, he's played this position. He's played inside. He's played outside. You know, so all those guys have something special, which um, would be pretty incredible for our offense. Hardy, a former Oklahoma State signee. What do you think about that when everybody tried to key on him last year? Do you have to tweak offense now this season? Uh, I think that with some of the other players being a year older certainly is, is going to help because it's going to give put a little bit more balance. But the thing about Teddy Veal, he just – he shows up every week. I mean, he shows up every week, and when we moved him to that spot where, where Trent Taylor was, who had right. 136 catches a year before. Uh, but I think Teddy Veal is incredibly smart, incredibly competitive. He's tough. He's got great hands. He works extremely hard. But probably one of the most important things is he's incredibly humble, as you sit here and listen to him talk about so many of the other players. But, uh, yeah, what he's able to do on the field and the way that he works and the way that he's developed his game and uh, changing direction, catching the ball, running with it after the catch, uh, I think he's a phenomenal talent. And not only that, he's already a young man that has his degree in hand. He's already graduated going into his final season now, uh, one of the first ones in his family to graduate. So really proud of what he's accomplished, not only on the field, but what he's accomplished in the classroom and off the field as a person. He's a guy that came in here before he had ever taken a snap at Louisiana Tech after he transferred in his freshman year, his, uh, after his sophomore year. He was voted a captain before he ever wow. played, before he ever took a snap on the field. And I think it shows the respect that his teammates had for him and his work ethic and his humble attitude and just his giving spirit. I want to talk about the defense because I talked to one coach. He says your roster compares to a Power 5 conference team as far as power and size go, especially in the front seven. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. I, I would. I, I think we have some very talented players, and not only as we'll get to Jalen Ferguson and what he brings to the table as a threat at defensive end, but uh, also when I look at some of the other guys on that defensive front, I think uh, our linebackers have some size, Kadarian Mason, Keontae Garner. Uh, again, what Jalen Ferguson has brought, I, I certainly think, uh, is a big reason that our secondary was able to do what they were able to do and to create not only the tackles for a lot, our, our front have a tackles for the loss, but our secondary to have the number of turnovers that we did. Jalen, I haven't forgot about you, I promise. Defensive lineman, you have the most career sacks, 27 and a half, most tackles for a loss, 40.5, than any other active player in the FBS. We talked about Teddy being the marked man. Are you the marked man now on defense? I mean, if I am the marked man on defense, I would be in trouble. But I got <laughs> ten more bad people on the field with me. I'm not, I'm not worried about nobody missing no slap when I'm on the field. So if they won't come at me, then I still got ten other players for them to worry about. Okay, Teddy kind of danced around it when I said he's Batman. If you're Batman, who's your Robin on the defensive line then? Jordan Bradford. He's Jordan. my Robin. There you my go, little Jordan. Robin, my little partner beside. <laughs> well, well here, here's what I have on the note: Jordan Bradford. Teams can't ignore him. It can't. He's a big plug in the middle. He, my right hand, he right beside me. Everything I do, we got our games, we got our signals. Me and him, we together, we make eye contact in the game. We know exactly what we're about to do. He my Robin. <laughs> I like that. See, I like that. See, he, he admitted to somebody. Now, you rank seventh in the NCAA in interceptions with 19 last season. And a lot of people say, well, it's good defensive backs. I think it starts with you guys up front. I think it's on both ends. We need good DBs to make quarterback hold his ball in his hand, which – Attributed to me having the most sacks right now, or is the pressure coming from the whole D line? It's not just me coming from both sides. Can't forget about up the middle with Jordan Bradford right there. It's hard to get away from him when you get rolling. Well, Coach, uh, you know, opportunistic defense, and, and their team has been known for that. Based on fumble recoveries, interception rate, 
Louisiana Tech was like a plus seven on the season. Mm -hmm. Actual rate was plus 13. Right. That's something that's instilled. Blake Baker, fourth year as defensive coordinator, that's something that's instilled in your players. It, it is, and I think Blake Baker's done a great job as a defensive coordinator. When somebody asked me about this team, they said, what do you think will be different with this team? I said, the biggest, the biggest difference is going to be uh, how productive we have a chance to be on defense. We were opportunistic. We made a lot of turnovers, created a lot of havoc with the great players like, like the, mm -hmm. the Jordan Bradford and having Jalen Ferguson coming off the edge. Amik Robertson is a young corner. But I think Blake Baker does a great job of really putting the schemes together and putting our players in a great position. And then we've got some really – we've got some great young men. We've got some phenomenal players. And, you know, I can't say enough about Jalen Ferguson. When you talk about his statistics, I don't think a lot of people know. You talk about tackles for a loss, sacks, right. and where he ranks right now in college football. Uh, and he's also a young man that will graduate this fall. He's one class away from – getting his degree, could have finished it up this summer, but he's going to graduate this fall. Uh, couldn't be more proud of what he's done on the field and both of them off the field as well. But I think defensively is where we have a chance to make uh, huge strides as a football team from last year to this year. And he looks like like an astute guy. He's got the glasses, you know. Well, he is he's, astute. He's going to graduate he's this gonna, fall. Look yes. at him, one class away. Yeah. And I believe the first one in your family. The first to one to graduate from college, from a university. No kidding. Exactly. Heaviest, one of my proudest achievements in graduating from college, and I'm about to do it. What's your family think about that? I mean, Everybody are they more proud of you for that or playing football? Playing football. I could have did stuff differently. You know, it could have been a different story coming out last year. But I decided to stay. I need. I refuse to stay at any university four years and not leave with a degree. There refuse you go. to waste anybody's time. Good for you, my friend. Now, the, here, here's the tough part. Your schedule, seven road games. You play yep. at LSU, at North Texas, at Mississippi State, at Southern Miss. Who came up with the schedule? <laughs> I, was saying, I, I, I know. I, I don't want to get you in trouble. I don't want to get you in trouble. On administrators that. administrate. Coaches coach. Players play. This is go. what they gave us. This is what we're going to play. We could moan, groan, complain about it. We play two games, have an open date. Then we go ten straight weeks with all those wrong get road games. It's going to be a challenge. We play some of the better teams in the league, but having to play Southern Miss on the road, having to play North Texas on the road, along with the LSU's and the Mississippi States, it's a challenge. And I think. I think one of the things that these guys will tell you, we've never run from a challenge at Louisiana Tech. Yep. And you know what? We're going to roll our sleeves up. And if it means we got to work a little bit harder and we got to be a little bit better, and you know what? If we've got to go do it, we play FAU on the road and they want it. And you put North Texas on the road, they want it. You know what? If you're going to if you're going to be the champ, you got to win some road games, and we're going to play some of the better teams on the road, and it'll be a great opportunity for us to show what we're made of. Well, the good news is too, your home field in Ruston, you protect it quite well too. We we have had success there. We have a great community that stands behind us. Uh, the new facilities that oh. have been put in place, which have been uh, an outstanding addition, and really made. Rust in a place where we have a chance to have some success, but we're going to have to win on the road. We're going to have to do it with the football team and the, with the leadership that we have with these two young men, uh, the, 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 just the standard that they are setting with this football team in the summer, uh, I think goes a long way towards making this a really exciting season for 2018. What will be even more special then if you do win the road games? Exactly, with, without a doubt, win. When, 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 you, when, when, you when, when we win them. That's why we're playing, we're playing the game. And I, I do. I really like we talked about being one of the youngest teams in the country mm -hmm. a year ago and making some mistakes and losing four games by a point and how close it was. But you know what? This is having the leadership like this. These guys have talked about, Coach, we have four bowl rings. Great accomplishment, great achievement. Uh, it's never been done in Louisiana Tech history. Uh, we're, we're in uncharted waters, but at the same time, and like they'll tell you, None of them's a conference championship ring. That's right. And that's the quest. That's the goal. That's what we're shooting for. You know what I like? Ending up with him for the final coach to talk to? Because now I'm ready. <laughs> you, you got me. You get me pumped up. You always do. Uh, I Every look time forward I come to, to Ruston, uh, you get me I look forward to it. Let's roll them up and go. Let's, I know get, these, let's get this bad boy going. These guys pump me up. They fire me up. They're the they're the fire, fueling my fire for sure. Tell your offensive line coach I said hi, by I'll the way. I'll definitely pass it to Coach McFarland. All right. Coach, congratulations. Gentlemen, best of luck this year. Stay healthy.